Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special episode of Rocking Realities. Why is it special? It's the very first interview I have ever done, which was exactly one year ago today with my all time favorite guitarist, Ryan Roxy, uh, backstage at an Alice Cooper concert in Munich. Um, well, I heard this would be a great opportunity to upload the inter interview on my YouTube channel. So enjoy the show and enjoy the ride. Are we recording? Yes, yes it's recording. Good. Okay. Good. I wrote down way too many questions, but there are five. Okay. Okay. Is that fine? Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay, your album. <laughs> Imagine reality. Um, when did you come up with the concept of imagining your reality and how did it benefit your life? That is a good question. <laughs> Uh, I basically came up with the title of the album over the last seven years, I would say. I've been trying to live my life like that my entire life, but the actual concept of imagining my reality, I really started thinking about seven years ago, right after I sort of was using this term called enjoy the ride. That's sort of always been my mantra. I always tell people that they should enjoy the ride and the ride is life. Well, how can you enjoy life more? Well, if you start imagining what your reality could be and just keep sort of visualizing the good things and the positive things that you want to happen in your life, uh, they become realities. And that's what was able to happen with this album. I was able to take a lot of music that from the past, present, and future and basically put it all together on an album that um, showcases where I'm at right now in life, but not just where I'm at in life right now, but where I've been the last few years and hopefully where I'm going. Okay. Um, and that's actually kind of related because, I mean, Imagine Reality helps you achieving your goals. Yes, it does. Um, so Visualizing, uh, anytime you try to visualize something, uh, try to do it from the perspective of you doing it, not watching someone else, not watching yourself do it. Because if you watch yourself being successful, maybe the end result would be someone else's success. Whereas if you take it from the perspective and point of view of you being the person that is, is achieving that success, Basically, here's an example. When I imagine myself playing the big rock show, I always I don't see myself on stage. I uh, I don't watch myself on stage. I basically see my am on stage and I'm looking out to the audience. So I'm looking at the audience, and that's the way I'm imagining myself being at a big rock show. And so, if you want to do that, you just have to make sure that you are in the position of of uh, the do the person having success. So I don't know if I've explained it right, but maybe you understand. Yeah. Like if you're, instead of looking at yourself being successful, be yourself being successful looking out at, and, and how the world treats you. Okay, and then uh, about to go, so what are your big five for life and have you already achieved them? Do you know what I mean by big five for life? When you say it's pre quiet a uh, big five for life. It's basically the five things you want to see, do, or experience the big five before, for life. before wow, you die. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. The big five for life. Um, I would be. It would be silly to say that you've done everything that you've wanted to do because I haven't. But I've always enjoyed the entire ride so far. I mean, even though, even though now looking back, even the hard times, I kind of remember going through a lot of hard times, whether it was personal life or whether it's uh, career-wise, whatever, I still remember having a sort of positive attitude during those times. So I would say I've enjoyed all these ups and downs of my life, but as far as achieving what is left there to achieve, there's so much more. I would still like to put out um, more music. I'd like to put out more television shows or podcasts or, or media stuff that I like doing because I do like to do interviews like we're doing right now. I like to talk back and forth. Um, so there's a whole section of that that I'd like to take 
you know, accomplish. I'd like to see success for my children, and I'd like to, you know, really try to help them out and sort of give them a foundation or even just some sort of inspiration that if you do concentrate and focus on your goals and and not giving up on your dreams that they can happen and they will and probably the one thing on the big five I haven't and I might not ever accomplish is the uh, jumping out of an airplane because I'm really really afraid of <laughs> heights in some ways but at the other you know but at the same time, I'd really like to go parachuting someday. You know, jumping out of an airplane and then a parachute and stuff. So, I'd, yeah, okay. so I, I haven't done that yet, and I don't know if I ever will. But uh, the closest thing I ever came to it was, uh, was being in a parasail, mm -hmm. you know, on, on the back of a boat in Greece. And that scared the shit out of me, so we'll see if I ever go. I'm not going to be bummed out if I don't end up jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> but as far as, you know, uh, personal goals, personal life, I'm very happy with the person I'm with. Um, I'm very happy seeing my kids develop into the people they are becoming. And I'm very happy with the friends that I have, you know, because I think the people that I do have and the friends that I do have around are important to me. So those, that, I mean, at the end of the day, those, the things that you really want to achieve are kind of small because uh, at the end of the day, it's, 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 do you like what you do? Do you love what you do in life? And um, are you around people that support that? And luckily, I have both that. Okay, about people that support you, your friends are very important to you. They yes. call you the nicest kind of rock and roll. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who does that? Do you call people. me that? Okay, a cool. lot of people do that. Okay. I, I think there's even a hashtag in Instagram. Really? Okay. I think so, yes. <laughs> I appreciate it. I, I do honestly feel that uh, people that have supported my music and people that have supported my career, I owe them everything in so many ways because they're the ones that allow me to be able to year after year play music and continue to play these types of venues and you know Alice Cooper fans have been so uh, die hard for the years that that and the fact that I'm able to get a, a, a portion of those fans to follow myself personally it just makes me um, so uh, thankful because You know, without <laughs> without the people that have been supporting me and they, the close relationships I have, you know, I, I, I put it this way: I would rather have like ten Lily Stolbergs or ten Lily McCartneys, <laughs> like who listen to my words, you know, who actually read into the lyrics of the songs, who learn the songs. I'd rather have 10 of those than a than thousand uh, people that just liked it because the, you know, the friend said it was cool. So, that's, uh, so I, I really think I invest in the fans because the, the fans invest in me. Is that why you started Rock and Roll Parking Lot? Um, in a way, yeah. I started Rock and Roll Parking Lot years and years ago because I, I felt it was a way, for one, for me to get out Uh, from backstage before a show to, to see who I was playing for, the real people. I want to I want to shake the hands of people that I'm playing for. I want to I want to uh, like like look into their eyes and go, okay, I'm I'm going to be playing for you. So now I know what kind of energy you're bringing. And every time I do the Rock and Roll Parking Lot, it gives me a boost of, uh, of, of positive energy that, to to get ready for the show. So whenever I come back. From a, from a rock and roll parking lot and get ready for backstage, it, it gives me more energy. You know? And what message would you like to give out to your fans? Um, like I said, the, the, the biggest message is whatever it is in, you do in life and whatever it is you're, you're, you're striving to do, even if it might not be the best of times or whatever, try to uh, 
enjoy the ride. Enjoy the process of it. Because even if, even if things are bad, they're going to get better. Things will switch. And if you're experiencing a really good wave of success, don't feel that it has to come crashing down. Ride out that wave of, of success and ride out that wave of positive energy as long as you can. Because who's, you know, you're the only, you, yourself is the only person that, that is to say when something comes to an end. So luckily, I, I hopefully I'm some sort of proof of that because most guys my age aren't able to, you know, play rock and roll in, in on stage and you know it's, it's sort of a young man's game people say but because I kept on telling myself and kept on enjoying the whole process and kept telling myself that it doesn't have to end maybe it's guys like me and Alice that you know sort of are able to continue playing long after it's supposed to be you know supposed to be cool <laughs> so uh, I still think it's cool to be up on stage to be honest with you very cool and to okay. play for you guys for it's sure cool. it's cool definitely yeah, and, cool. And, I, and I look forward to seeing what you like hopefully what this next generation of people that have listened to our music comes out with on their own I'm always curious to see like you know I want to listen to your new stuff I want to listen to to uh, to new bands that come up and that are directly influenced from the types of bands that we've been playing with over the year, over the years. Glenn Chester and Beth. <laughs> yeah, that's Glenn. <laughs> okay. See your next interview. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I actually think the other. Do you know the other Lily, the one who has the sober Yes, yes, yes. She's here too. Yeah, she oh would boy. love to do that. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, I have one last question. Okay. I think then it's enough for the magazine. Okay, cool. Uh, which values are important for you? Which what? Values. Is Values. that the right word? Values. Um, <laughs> whew, I think being honest with others and to yourself. Because I always haven't been honest. I'm the first person to admit that, that I've made mistakes and haven't always been honest with others. But... I've really tried hard to turn that around in, in recent years. I think I've done a pretty good job of it. So I, when, you know, when I look someone in the eye and I tell them the truth, I expect the truth back. And I think it's not unreasonable to ask that. So that, that's one of my biggest values is I tell my kids, it's like, not just being honest with other people, but being honest with yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And not beating yourself up if you think the weaknesses that you have don't fit in to this society. Because you are who you are, and you're gonna have weaknesses. You're gonna have faults. It's just, can you yourself sleep at night with those faults and try to improve them? And that's what I try to do every day still. I'm far from perfect, trust me. <laughs> I'm not the nicest guy in rock and roll. <laughs> but, but you know what? I, I, I'm very, I could be the most appreciative guy to get what, he, to get what I able to do. Because I, I do appreciate what, what, you know, what it means to be playing at this level with this type of artist. You know, it, it, with an icon like Alice Cooper. So I'm, you know, maybe it took not playing with him for some years when I didn't play with him. You know, that, that break that, it, that I didn't play with Alice from 2006 to 2012 to sort of make me realize just how fortunate uh, I am and everybody in this band is. Cool? Yes. Anything else? Thank you. I have a lot more questions, but I think... Well, if you think, you know, because you're going you're gonna to you're gonna have to put it together Send it to me in English, and then maybe I could help you proofread it when you're done, yeah. so, so it reads good and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not even sure if they need it in in English or in German. Oh, is it going to be in German? I don't know. Right. I have to ask them. Okay, ask them. Because the magazine is actually in German. I think, okay, uh, well then, if sure. it's in German, then just make sure it reads good and it doesn't read like a lot of. But but I'll ask uh, them later. Uh, uh, maybe it's in English. I'm not sure. Okay. okay, but you know what I'm saying. 
because the thing is for me it's like whenever I read uh, if I do like a South African South American interview or something sometimes I just take like the, the, the transcript and just say what I said and it's like long and run on and I want you to edit it and take the good parts is that cool? Okay. yeah can you do that? yeah cool. so we're good yeah thank good. you very good I like this <laughs>